Let's give it. Let's give it one more. Just round of applause for our speakers and our students today. First John five eleven through twelve says, "And this is the testimony: God has given us eternal." Life And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. Sometimes we spend our entire lives looking for this life. We spend our entire lives looking for some type of purpose, some type of value within ourselves. And we spend it just looking for something that will make us alive. So, so we go after so many different things. And you know, because it can be so easy to walk around life with a deadness inside of you. It can be so easy to walk around life with something empty inside of you. Maybe there's a, a bitterness that you're just holding on to that you won't let go, or it's an unforgiveness that you're, that you're just struggling and struggling to forgive somebody, or maybe there's a, an addiction to sin in your life, and this bondage is just tying you down. So you walk around life with this deadness, and now you're looking for something to give you that life again, to give you that value Again, and maybe for some of us, that comes with my career. If I could, you know, if I could just get the approval of other people, if my career was good enough, people would think highly of me. Or maybe if I drove up to work in the right car, people would think highly of me. Or maybe, maybe your approval comes in how well behaved your kids are or how well your kids do or whether or not they're getting good grades or they go off to a good school or if they're making right choices with their relationships. So we put our approval in those things and now everything we do, everything we try to do surrounds ourselves in those things and now we'll do everything we can to make sure that those things stay true in our lives because we want this deadness. We want to feel some type of value of life inside of us. And what we find is that those things never work. We go throughout life and we just want more. Maybe you do have a good job, but it's not the best job. So you could keep going and going and going. You want more and more and more. Your kids, they're good kids, but you know, they could be better. And so you want more. You put all these expectations and pressures on them. You want more and more and more and nothing is reviving that deadness inside of you. And here's what I know is true. If you want to be alive again, Jesus is the only one who brings a true life, a true fulfillment, a true value that doesn't leave us wanting more, that doesn't leave us looking for something else. Jesus brings life because Jesus has life and Jesus is life. It says that he has life. He, it's in his DNA. It's who he is. He is life. And through Jesus is only when we can revive that deadness inside of our hearts. Because Jesus is life. Our theme for this Sunday, for our youth Sunday, is alive, in case you, ha you haven't noticed by that. It is alive. And every single one of these students who, who you've seen speak up here, give worship, pass off the communion, take pictures, work in the sound booth back there, every single one of these students who are here today are here because they have found life. They have found <laughs> Jesus. And not only have they just heard about Jesus, but they have witnessed and they have experienced Jesus for themselves. It's not something that their parents have told them anymore. It is them saying, I have known Jesus. I have walked with Jesus. I know who he is. And they have experienced Jesus. And they have this life inside of them now. And they are serving you here today. They are speaking to you here today because they are dedicated to the one who brings them life. However, you know, sometimes this can be a difficult thought for us. This could be a difficult thought because the, the idea of having something alive, having life, because if we're honest, we live in a pretty messed up, broken world, right? You don't have to go far to know that our world is broken. You turn on the news for five minutes, you log on to Facebook, and you'll know within five seconds there's something messed up going on in our world. It's a dark place. We know this, and this idea that we have something alive in this dark world can sometimes be confusing. And, and, and now we start to have these anxious thoughts like, what are we leaving for our next generation, 
What are we leaving for the next generation? What comes next? Is there any hope for them after today? Is there any hope in the future? We have these, these anxious thoughts, and sometimes it can be discouraging because now all of these attacks are coming up against our children, the temptations, the different decisions, the pressure, the expectations of, of, of coming up against our students, and now we're wondering, is there a hope for our students? Is there a hope for our teenagers for the next generation? And it can be extremely discouraging. Can we be alive in such a dark world? And here's what I know. God is working something amazing through our students. Let me ask you guys this. What do you think of when you think of teenagers? Be honest. What do you think of when you think of teenagers? Maybe, maybe a few, because there's a lot, if we're honest, there's a lot of distance between us and teenagers. Let's be real. There's some distance between us and teenagers. Maybe it's an age thing. Maybe some of us more than others, but maybe it's an age thing. I'm joking. I'm totally joking. I don't, I don't want to get fired. Um, maybe it's an age thing. Uh, I always tell these dumb jokes, and PB's right there every time. Man, maybe it's an age thing. Maybe it's a communication thing. It's a different way of life, a different opinions. But if we're honest, there's some type of confusion or distance between us and teenagers, right? And, you know, we, we sit here wondering, you know, don't they have something better to do than being on their phones? They're on their phones all the time. Or, or can they even properly communicate with each other? Like, can, can, can they talk outside of their phones? Or, or how can one teenager go from having all this high-octane energy to watching Netflix on the couch for hours on end in a single day? And, and what on earth is a selfie? Can someone explain what a selfie is to me? And we have all of this confusion, but the underlying question is, is there hope for our future going forward? Is there hope for our future going forward? And here's, here's what I know. Some of us may be terrified of what's coming next, but I have spent time with these teenagers. I, when I have encountered these teenagers, shared their stories, shared their experiences, shared their time, shared their burdens, been with them, talked with them, and seen what's going on in their lives, here's what I can tell you. That there is life. There is life inside of these teenagers. There is a burning passion to see their world changed. There is a desire for others to see the goodness of God in their lives. There is something alive in these teenagers. When I look at them, I don't see something dark. I don't see something, uh, you know, where there's no hope. I see something alive. And you know, students, if you've ever been around a teenager, you know that, that teenagers, they are so full of life and they are so full of passion. And here's what I know. Life is contagious in a dark world. It is contagious in a dark world, and aren't you glad that these teenagers have so much of it, and they have so much hope, and they have so much passion going forward. It is contagious. And over this past year, we've had worship events where students have poured out their hearts before God. They have gone to the throne of God and said, God, you can have my heart. You can have everything. And they've given it to God. We've had retreats where our roots have been dug deep in the grace of God. And over the past year, we've had over 95 brand new students walk through our doors because our students have decided that there is no one, no matter how old you are, how young you are, what you look like, where you've been from, who cannot get the grace of God. We know that there's a future, that there is something alive here. And here's, here's what I just want you guys to know. We are so grateful for your guys' support every single week, for your support, your encouragement, your generosity of what you give to this ministry. We are so thankful for what you guys do for us and our students. And all of us here are, to, are here today because we want to let you know that there is something alive right here in Calvary Assembly. There is something alive. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this time to just worship you. 
Thank you for the life that you've brought to us and the life that you have brought to our students, God. We thank you that there is never a time that you don't walk with us, that you're not near with us. God, thank you for bringing us a hope and a purpose. And I thank you for these students. Your grace. And I pray these things in your name. Amen. Would you join us as we continue?